All right, everybody. So welcome to Power Yoga from Decathlon. My name is Byron, Byron de Marseille. I've been teaching yoga for about a decade. Um, just a little bit about me before we get into this physical and mental uh, cleansing in a sense. I taught for many, many years at a place called Power Yoga, the original Power Yoga studio developed by Brian Kest. This is a studio that's in Santa Monica, California. Um, one of the two studios closed its doors about six months ago. So I decided to move to Bali and test the waters there. Um, I just want to be clear before we start class. So power yoga, yes, it's strong. Yes, it can be a workout, a wonderful, sometimes too much of a workout, possibly. But the way I'm going to teach it isn't going to be overwhelming unless you choose to make it that way. So it comes from empowerment. Do what empowers you. So I'll explain a lot of different things while we practice today. Some of those are going to be geared towards checking your ego and deciding like, should I do what he said or should I not? Should I rest? What should I do? What's best for me? So ultimately, it's just a listening practice, learning how to listen to yourself. Um, a little bit, you're listening to me. You might look at the screen the whole time, but I encourage you to look away from the screen as much as possible and go off of my auditory um, linguistic cueing, if you will. So let's all make sure we're on mute. Otherwise, I got to go in and discipline you guys which means mute you myself. Okay, I think we're good. I can hear clearly now. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. This will probably be anywhere from 60 minutes to 75 minutes. And we're just gonna start in a pose called child's pose. So you're gonna place your forehead down on the mat. Open the knees wide apart, wide enough so your ribs can rest comfortably between your thighs. And then place your forehead down onto your yoga mat or your floor or whatever surface that you're using. And we really just want to make sure this first minute isn't so physical. It's more of a gear change. A shift, if you will. And in this first minute or two, I'll ask you to as deeply and quickly as possible connect with your breath. Start to pay attention to your breath. You can breathe deeper and you can try to smooth the breath out. Nostril breathing is encouraged. If you can, narrow the breath down to your nose. And the key is to breathe in a way that just really resonates with you, that makes you feel peaceful inside. And this will be handy information as we start to move into postures that might require a little more tolerance or strength patience or flexibility. So just kind of remembering that the breath is the barometer. That's how we check in and kind of see how we're doing mentally. Are we still able to pay attention to how we feel as we move through these postures? Now, if you ever need to rest, please take child's pose. This pose is always here for you to take on your own. You're still practicing yoga when you do this. Now, if you need to take a break, then sure, go to the restroom, do all that. But if you want to practice yoga but rest, just come here and tune into your breath and join us when you're ready. But from here, go ahead and stretch your arms way forward and begin spreading your fingers nice and wide. And your elbows can lift a little off the ground. You can feel your armpits stretching a bit, shoulder blades starting to firm onto the back. And then as you inhale, let's come all the way up to the hands and the knees. We're gonna tuck the toes underneath. 
and start to lift your knees off the ground and then push your hips to the back of the room. We call it downward facing dog. Whether it's your first time here or your 10,000th time here, treat this first one as though it's the first one ever. Just feel into it. We won't even worry about the technique yet. Start to drive your hips back a little bit if you want. And just approaching a stretch that feels good for you. It's pretty common to bend the knees here for some people that are tight. And if there's one thing I would ask you to pay attention to on this first down dog, it's just that your fingers are spread wide enough so you're protecting your wrists. And then go ahead and check your breath nice and full and deep. So they say there's about 23,000 breaths in a day. So we're going to have about a thousand of those breaths together today. A thousand to pay attention to. The more you pay attention to these breaths, you'll probably start to pay attention just to the little things throughout your day. Take an inhale, wind your hips back a little bit more, and then drop your knees down onto the floor. Sit on your heels. So untuck your toes and just sit on your heels. I want you to roll your wrists out a few times. You can roll them out however you want. You can roll them clockwise, counterclockwise, switch directions. Just kind of bring stimulation into the fingers. You can open and close the hand as quick as you can. Do this for about 10 seconds. And then try this one. Interlace your fingers and start to slinky your hands around, bringing in more flexibility into your wrists. So I know some of you guys are newer to yoga. Some of you guys have been practicing a while. The hands are such an important piece of the puzzle so that we can continue to practice pain-free. The most common injury is the wrist. So let's protect them today so we can show back up tomorrow. All right, place your hands down on the ground. Make sure index fingers are right forward to 12 o'clock, parallel. And then lift your left leg straight back behind you. Reach your right arm forward into a handshake position. And as you push through your left hand, reach through those extended limbs until it feels pretty nice. Nice, and then as you lift a little bit higher, take one more inhale, and then set everything down as you exhale. We're just gonna switch sides. Lift the right leg straight back, and float your left arm forward handshake position. And this is just kind of a setup round. We take a few breaths, we establish the foundation, which is from the ground up. So where's the hand, the leg, the shoulder, the joints? One more breath in, lift a little bit higher, and set everything down. So that was the setup round. Now let's flow through that with the breath. So on the inhale, lift your left leg back, right arm forward. And as you exhale, set it down. And then switch, right leg back, left arm forward, breathe in. And release as you breathe out. Then do that a couple of times. Inhale. And exhale. Inhale, and exhale. One more round, left leg, right arm, to release. Right leg, left arm, and set it down. All right, now look forward. So you're lifting your chin a little bit. Draw your shoulder blades back and stick your butt out slightly. Now take an inhale. And then round your spine, tuck your chin towards your tail, push through your shoulder blades, round the back. And again, inhale, arch your back, call this cat cow. And on the exhale, round the spine and tuck your tail. And do this about five times on your own. I just want you to get a glimpse of how simple it can be to move with your breath. So in this position, we're just having two movements. One is called extending the spine, and one is called flexing the spine. 
in some ways, we're just countering gravity's effects on the body. Now, eventually, we'll move through more complicated movements with our breath. Do a couple more rounds, but feel how simple it can be. And you want to bring this simplicity into those moments later as well. Something about moving with your breath that really focuses the mind. Narrow focus. All right, now come into a neutral position. We're gonna step into a plank position, which is the top of a push-up. It's like an upper push-up. Try not to have your hands too far forward. Shift forward so your shoulders are over your wrists. And then push through your hands round your back a little bit. Beautiful. Now I want you to push your heels forward, round your back, lift your butt higher. And come into a tippy toe down dog. So your heels are gonna stay up more on the balls of your feet, not the tips of your toes. The heels are up. And then down dog. So press your heels down low. Nice. And then do that in reverse. Lift your heels up and roll all the way forward into a plank position as you inhale. Good. And then lift your butt up and round all the way back to your downward facing dog. Let's do that one more time. Heels up, roll forward to plank, articulating the spine. And then rolling back to downward facing dog. Beautiful. Bring your feet together in down dog. Just going to do this one time with the feet together. I want you to feel more the center line. You can push the toes together slightly. And then push your hips back a little bit more and bring the right knee to the nose. Just feel that round the spine a little, lots of core strength here, lots of power. And then we call it three-legged down dog. Lift your right leg all the way back and do your best not to open the hip, which means lift the leg up, but don't turn the hip. You can feel the inner right thigh lifting up higher. Good, and then set your right foot down, feet are still together. Take an inhale, push your hips back a little more, and then bring the left knee into your nose and round your spine. Three-legged down dog. Lift your left leg all the way back and see if you can focus on that technique of just lifting the leg up and trying not to turn the hip open. It's not wrong to turn the hip open, but we'll do that later in a sequence. Set your left foot down and lift your heels up. Once you lift your heels up and walk your hands back to your feet, squat down to your heels. So you're basically balancing on your toes. All right. If you're okay here, bring the hands to your heart. Push your knees a little bit forward and take a moment. Just notice the expenditure of energy. It's almost all mental here. Right. The mind is balancing you, or you're falling, trying to balance you. Physically, it's really effortless. So a lot of these shapes will be today. Right. All right, release your hands down and forward fold. Heels to the ground, separate your feet a little bit wider. And then bring the hands up to your shin bones, pull your chest forward. I want you to lengthen your spine. And then forward fold on your exhale. Good. Now do that with your fingers on the ground. Right? So lengthen your spine with your fingertips down. Mm -hmm. And then lift your left leg behind you. So you're basically in this modified warrior three. I want you to pull your sternum forward. Most likely you'll have to bend the right knee a little bit to lengthen the spine. So it looks like this. Good. Now if you want a little bit more, notice how I said if. Then lift your hands off the floor, bring them to your heart. You can feel how this right hip, it wants to stick out. Try to draw the right hip under you, clockwise, turning back. Nice. Hands are either to the heart or on the floor. If they're at the heart, place them down on the floor. Everybody hang the head and walk your hands closer to your right toes. So you're just bending over, you're lifting a leg. It's very simple. And there's a gentle quality to what you're doing. Let's take one last deep breath in. 
and we'll switch. Set the left foot next to the right. First, bring the hands to your shins. Pull the chest forward, lengthen your spine. And forward fold, exhale. And then hands down again, pull the sternum forward, and we'll lift the right leg back this time. Now I'm lengthening my spine, so my hands are directly under my shoulders. I have to bend my left knee because my anatomy is that my legs are somewhat long. And then if you just decide at this point, if you want more stimulation, hands to your heart. And then building the balance, the strength, the focus, and the technique. Left hip is drawing under and back. Spine is defying gravity. I send in hands to the ground, hang your head, and flirt with lifting your back leg a little bit higher. Beautiful, last inhale and set the right foot next to your left exhale. Hands to shins, pull the chest forward and lengthen. And pause here with the hands to your hips. Right, so you feel this strong line of energy. It's like a 90 degree angle with your body. And let's stand all the way up. All right, good job. Let's walk to the front of the yoga mat. Bring your feet a little closer together. Feet stay parallel. And sweep your arms up. Take an inhale. And then hands to your heart as you exhale. So two more times. Inhale, reaching up. Infusing intention with your movement. Exhale. Why are you here? Inhale, reach up. I need some passion, some inspiration. Exhale, hands to heart. And then this time, reach up. Inhale. And forward fold on your exhale. Good. Step the left foot to the back of your mat and reach your arms behind you. Nice. So back leg is strong. It's called a runner's lunge. A lot of you guys are runners. All right. So this right hip draws back. It's like somebody just set up their yoga mat next to you. They said, hey, you want to run a race? Wait till I say go. You're ready to go. Good, release your hands down, drop your left knee down, maybe scoot it back just a little bit and raise your arms up. Hook your thumbs and pull on your thumbs. If you sink into your hips, reach the arms up higher and higher. So we're feeling the front of that left hip, that front left leg start to open up a little bit more. Beautiful, release your hands down to the ground. Tuck your back toes, remember plank pose. This time, keep your right foot lifted a little bit off the ground. And if you wanna find a little more balance and challenge, reach your left arm forward into a handshake position. Try to keep your hips level. Notice, I said either reach your left arm forward or don't. Notice if that takes away from your breath. Good, set the hand and the foot down. Roll onto the outer edge of your left foot and sweep your right arm up side, plank pose. Now, if you're gonna modify, you can always drop your left knee down. Otherwise, be your stacked, reach over your ear. Steady breath, steady mind. Good, and then right hand down. Forearm plank, lower your elbows down to the ground. Take a few breaths to activate the full body. All right, lower the hips down. Drop the knees and untuck your toes, please. And draw your sternum forward. It's called Sphinx Pose. Elbows are right underneath your shoulders. The collarbone is spread evenly. Release your head down, hands behind your back. If you can, interlace your fingers here. Pull the knuckles to the back of the room. Firm your legs, lift your legs a little bit up. Nice job. And then open the arms out to the sides, but bend your elbows. Start to lift a little bit higher. So you're increasing the back arch of your body just with your back strength. Two more breaths. 
and relax all the way down. Press back, almost like child's pose. Keep your toes tucked underneath, and as you push your hips back, lift your knees up, downward facing dog. Like we did earlier, inhale, press your hips back, and bring the right knee to your nose. Three-legged down dog. Lift your right leg all the way back. And then just another option to challenge yourself. Maybe lift your left hand off the ground and reach it forward. You're in down dog with one leg up. Some of you might have an arm up. Nice, both hands down, knee to nose. Step your right foot between your hands. We call this crescent pose. Reach your arms up. So the right foot's at the front of your mat, back, back foot's at the back of your mat. Tailbone softens down, arms are vibrant. It's like we're building from the ground up, just like the house you're in right now. And how strong can you make the foundation? And from that foundation, there's energy that can reach up, 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 up. Nice, lean forward, hands to heart. And as you shift forward, lift your back leg up. So now we're all in that warrior three. Now you can have your arms out to the sides like airplane wings. You could reach forward if that's something you want which has a lot more intensity. With the intensity comes risks. So make sure you're practicing that mindfulness, pacing yourself. Then try to get your head lower and your back leg higher. Hands might be on the floor at this point. And then everybody hands down. Good, step the left foot next to your right foot. Step the right foot to the back of your mat, runner's lunge. Draw your sternum forward. Remember, Usain Bolt just set up his yoga mat right next to you. Sorry, do you know you're frozen? I do. <laughs> Drop the right knee down and reach your arms up. Good, hook your thumbs, opposite thumb in front and pull on your thumbs. There we go. So we pull on the thumbs to widen the shoulder blades. Sink a little bit deeper, maybe reach a little bit higher. All right, release your hands down to the ground. So remember plank, tuck your toes, lift your back knee, but keep your left foot lifted in plank, left leg back. Now, if you're gonna reach your right arm forward, find a good place for your left hand, and then maybe a two-legged plank. Mind is the king of the body. The breath is the king of the mind. Nice, set the hand and the foot down, roll onto the outer edge of the right foot and left arm up. So when we talk about modifying, we're customizing for our own needs. Some of you might wanna set the right knee down. You might've had a shoulder surgery this year. Sweep your left arm over your ear and lift your hips a little bit higher. All right, left hand down, forearm plank one more time. We're still just warming up. In fact, the whole practice is a warm up. Whole body is active, legs are strong, inner thighs. When we talk about our core in yoga, it starts with our feet, the inner foot, all the way through the inner thighs and then your actual abs. All right, lower the hips down again, drop your knees and untuck your toes, please. So we've been here before, round two. We call this locust pose. Hands behind your back, interlace your fingers, and pull the knuckles back, lift your legs a little bit. Nice. So you're opening on one end of the body, you're opening the front of your body, and then you're anchoring the hips down, lifting your legs a little higher. Nice, one more time, bend your elbows out to the side, we call it cactus arms. 
Lift the body even higher and relax all the way down. Press back almost like child's pose, toes are tucked. And then lift your knees up, downward facing dog. All right, good job. Push the hips back on your inhale. Left knee to the nose, exhale, shift forward, round your spine, three-legged down dog. Lift your left leg back. And a few of you, maybe lift your right hand off the ground. And just know that's possible, right? It's physics, right? Something moving back, something has to move forward. It's energy, not just strength. Both hands are down. Step the left foot to the front of your mat and reach all the way up. Remember crescent pose. In crescent, we want to find this center of gravity. So a lot of you guys are probably leaning forward. Try not to do that. Try to get upright. You bend the back knee, center your pelvis, energize the arms. And now we'll start to lean forward intentionally. Draw the hands to the heart to start and lift your back leg up. This is where I froze last time. Take a few breaths. And you're kind of like a teeter-totter, this next thing I'm asking you to do. And teeter-totter, one side tilts down. Let the head go lower and lift your back leg go higher. You might have your hands down at this point. And then everybody hands down, last inhale. And set the right foot next to your left. It looks like I froze again. It doesn't like that pose. All right, chair pose, bend the knees and reach your arms up. Sit into your heels a little bit more. Really make the heels heavy. Everybody look down at your toes. If you can't see your toes, pull your hips back even more. And forward fold. Nice job. Now this time, inhale, fingers can stay down or hands to shins, either way, what works best for you. Inhale, lengthen. And then step, step, back to plank position. And as slow as you can, lower all the way down to your belly. Untuck your toes, reach your arms forward, and have a karate chop with your hands, right? So the pinky edge side of your fingers are down. I want you to lift your left leg up and your right arm up. So you have these opposite limbs lifted. Good, reaching through the sides of your waist here. Really get long, take one more inhale and release everything down. Switch, right leg lifts and your left arm. You can lift your head a little bit if you want. One more inhale, lift a little higher and release everything down. Now let's move with our breath, same movements. Left leg and right arm lift, inhale and set them down, exhale. Switch, right leg, left arm. Exhale, release. Inhale, switch, one more round. Exhale, let it go. Inhale, switch. Exhale, release. Slide your hands back, thumbs right next to your chest, upper ribs and chest. Elbows tucked into your rib cage. Press your hands down, cobra. So you don't want to jam the shoulders here. Shoulders pull back, and you don't want the elbows out. You want to pull the elbows in. That means the inner hand is heavy. Index finger, thumb. All right, last inhale. We're going to bring the head down as we exhale. Tuck the toes with strength, plank pose. Press all the way up. Downward facing dog, exhale. Pull the hips back. Let's all take a big sigh in through the nose. Open the mouth and let it go. So one more time. Deep breath in. Followed by a deep breath out. All right, lift your heels up. Inhale, bend the knees, look forward, and then walk, step, or maybe jump to the front of your mat. Inhale, lengthen the spine. We've rehearsed all of this now. Forward fold. Stand up, sweep the arms up and over your head. And then hands to the heart, exhale. Let's keep moving here. Inhale, reach up. 
Forward fold on your exhale. Fingers down or hands to shins. Inhale, lengthen. Step, step back to plank, or you can jump back. We call it chaturanga. Land halfway down. If you're in plank, lower down. Cobra as you inhale, maybe upward facing dog. Downward facing dog. Lift up and back. Three full cycles of breath. Start to feel the heat, stimulation, circulation. Keep oxygenating the, the blood. One more full breath and we'll start to move. So with your inhale, heels are lifting, knees are bending, look forward, stepping or jumping to the front. Inhale, lengthen the spine. And exhale, fold. Feel the rhythm. Stand up, inhale, sweep your arms up. And then hands to your heart, exhale. So the two more of these, inhale, reach up. Forward fold on your exhale. Inhale, lengthen the spine. And then step, step to plank or jump back if you want, like last time, and lower down. Inhale to back bend. How's your breath? Downward facing dog, exhale. And I know it looks physical, but this is a mental practice. All right, check in. Where's the mind? Where does it go? Keep observing, keeping track, and keep bringing it back onto your mat. Practice makes presence heels high inhale bend the knees step float or fly inhale glance forward and exhale fold and relax standing up sweep the arms up higher than ever hands to your heart exhale inhale reach up last round Forward fold, exhale, spiritually sound. Inhale, lengthen, keeping it simple. And step or jump back and lower down. Cobra or, or upward facing dog should feel like a massage to your spine. Down dog, steady breath, steady mind. All right, guys, let's move on. Walk your hands back to your feet, separate your feet. About the width of your mat and turn your toes out. So your toes are a little bit off your mat. And squat down. You could even say 10 and two o'clock with your toes, hands to heart. If your heels are not down, you can always try to roll up this back edge of your mat a little bit to put your heels on that. That's only if you need it. And then lift your spine. And see if you can D5 gravity's effects on your body here. So the crown of your head is energetically lifting up. Elbows are pressing gently into your inner knees. You feel a bit of rooting down through the pelvis and the heels. Nice job, release the hands down, forward fold, feet turn into parallel. We're gonna stand on our hands here, a handstand. Lift your toes, slide under the feet with your hands. So it's not the kind of handstand you might have thought. It's not the kind of handstand you see on Instagram. You follow me at Byron Yoga, by the way. <laughs> but it is a handstand that you probably value more the wiser you become. Taking care of your hamstrings, taking care of your hands a little bit. Some of you might need to bend the knees more to get your hands to fit all the way underneath there. Release the hands out from underneath your feet. Heel toe your feet all the way together until they meet and bend your knees. Remember chair pose? You want to be able to see your toes. If you were to look down, raise your arms. Wonderful, lift the right knee to your chest, so one-legged chair. Try to keep the integrity of chair pose here. So you might even sink a little bit deeper. You might lift the right knee a little bit higher. Good. 
And as you come all the way up, straighten your right leg and try not to lean back. Try to go up, 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 up. And it's okay if the leg's not all the way up, just straighten it. Good, back to chair pose. Bend the knees, find your foundation, and then lift the left knee up to your chest. All right, so you still have chair pose with one leg. One leg is sinking a little deeper into it while the other one's lifting higher. Nice, stand all the way up without leaning back. Straighten your left leg. Wake up the front hip flexor. Nice, and then this time just set the foot down, hands to your hips. Let's move on, step the left foot forward. Pretty far, turn to the right and pivot your left foot in. Once you get here, make sure your feet are parallel. So we don't want this, all right? We want the parallel, which might look a little turned in even. All right, hands behind your back, interlace the fingers. Take a big inhale here, lift your heart. And fold forward on your exhale. Lift the hands up and away from your back, towards the floor. And allow your breath to influence the body. In a pose like this, your exhale can relax you even more. When we show up onto our mats, it's kind of like we're looking at our engine. We'll find when we look under the hood and we look at the engine, it's not one of those old fashioned engines, it's a hybrid. Where we, we kind of run off of these currents of energy or electricity. So some of these postures are energizing, like this one, they can be, or you can spend your energy here doing things that might exhaust you, like thinking. All right, come up to your fingertips here, pull the heart forward and place the hands to your hips. Might wanna bend the knees a little bit, standing all the way up and opening the arms. Call this one a warrior two. Look over your right hand, turn your right toes out and bend your right knee. Spreading the arms nice and wide. Sinking into that front right thigh. Nice. So we're going to have this blend of holding postures and flowing through them. Find the balance between those two. Usually people who love high cardio, they love to move. But sitting still can be a bit more challenging. Sit a little deeper and then straighten the right leg. Switch. Right foot comes in, left toes turn out. Bend your left knee 90 degrees and just try to do the pose correctly. Not perfectly, just correctly. Yoga actually treats perfectionism, it doesn't encourage it. Let's try to sit a little bit deeper, front left thigh. Back leg stays strong. Come on, a little bit deeper if you have it. There we go. I can see you guys working over there. Let's take one more inhale. Straighten your left leg, turn your left foot in. This is a little different, hands behind your back. Hold your elbows like this behind your back. Right. Option two, you can do a fist bump behind your back. And then if you can, this one's harder, but palms together like this behind your back. All right, just choose one that fits you and start to fold forward again. Nice, remember how I said your core starts with your feet? Imagine sliding your feet together to activate that. So your inner thighs are active. That's your core in yoga. All right, slowly come all the way back up to standing, hands to hips. We're just gonna look to the front of the mat and step up to the front of the yoga mat. Bring the feet back together 
and come into chair pose. Sit the hips down. Inhale, raise your arms. And forward fold on your exhale, hands to the floor. Lengthen the spine, inhale, fingertips or shins. Step to plank or jump back and lower down. Elbows in. Inhale, back bend like you're surfing oxygen. Downward facing dog, hips high, head low, breathe deep. Good, we're gonna start to move here. Inhale, press your hips back. Right knee to the nose, round your spine. Three-legged down dog, lift your right leg back. And then step to the front of your mat. You're gonna do warrior one, but before you do it, spin your back heel down and walk your right foot just a little bit to the right. Then come all the way up. Arms are gonna reach up this time. Back leg is strong and straight. Hands behind your back. Interlace the fingers. You want to make sure the back leg stays really strong here. Inhale, lift your chest and start to fold over your right leg. Maybe inside of your right leg. Should feel this deep within your right hip. Drop your hands down to the ground and just step back to down dog. Inhale, press your hips back. Left knee comes in, round your spine. Three-legged down dog. Lift your left leg back. Good, step the left foot to the front of your mat. Again, before we come up, spin your back heel down. Walk your left foot just a little to the left. This is to help out the hips. Come all the way up to warrior one. We're trying to get those hips to turn forward, but we don't want to twist the spine to do that. Just moving the pelvis. Hands behind you, interlock the fingers. Take a big breath in, lift your chin, then bow forward, humble warrior we call this, with humility, which means knowing we don't have all the answers and that nobody probably does. Right? The teacher is within you. That's why we're listening to us. Hands to the ground, step back, downward facing dog. Let's move through vinyasa here. Inhale forward to plank position. And exhale, lower down slowly and sweetly. Inhale, back bending freely. Downward facing dog. Nice, you guys. So we're going to keep on moving here with the momentum. Remember, if you need rest, please take that on your own. Heels lift up, inhale. Bend the knees. Walk, step, or jump to the front of your mat. Inhale, lengthen the spine. And exhale, forward fold. Remember, chair pose, sink the hips down. And raise your arms. This time, hands to your heart. We're going to twist to the right. Introducing twisting into the spine. Palms together, elbows hooked outside of the knee. Try not to let the knee, that left knee poke forward. Pull the left knee back so your hips are level. Basically, anytime we see a new pose that we haven't done today, we're gonna hold it just a little bit longer. And if we've seen that pose, we're gonna flow right through it. Chair pose, inhale, we've seen that. Twist to the left, hook your right elbow outside of your left knee. Palms together, try to keep your knees level and your hips level. It's keeping the butt low. Back to chair pose, inhale. Forward fold on your exhale. Keep moving, inhale, lengthen the spine. Step the plank or jump back and lower down. Cobra or upward facing dog, inhale. Downward facing dog, exhale. If you're with me, inhale, press your hips back. Right knee to the nose, exhale. Three-legged down dog. This time we're gonna bend the right knee and open the hip, stacking the right hip above your left. Nice, and then step the right foot forward. 
Send the back heel down, warrior one. Inhale, we've been here before. Exhale, warrior two, spread your arms. We've also been here, but not here. Turn the right palm up and reverse warrior. So you're keeping your legs in that warrior two stance, but you're reaching up and back to stretch the right side of your body. Maybe even sinking a little bit deeper in here. Nice, from here, take your right hand and hold your right ankle with your right hand, arms inside of the leg. Take your left arm up and sweep it over your left ear. Good, take a few breaths here. If you know how to bind, if you practice yoga a lot, you can do that on your own. For all intents and purposes, ground your back foot and reach those left fingertips so far away from you, it just feels good. That's it, left arm up, go super slow, super slow. Warrior two, press all the way up. Take one more inhale, sit a little deeper and straighten your right leg. Now we're gonna to wanna to shorten the stance. So heel toe your back foot in just a little bit more. Right, and then reach as far as you can over your toes. Both legs are straight. Reach, 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 reach. Triangle pose, right hand down to hold somewhere on your right leg. And then for today, let's take the left hand behind the back, maybe to the lower back or maybe to the inner thigh. Either way works. Use that as leverage to turn your spine. You can look up towards the ceiling if your neck allows that. You're trying to pull the right hip under you as opposed to letting the butt swing out behind you. Now we're cooking, guys. Look down in front of your right foot and we're gonna to start to bend the right knee. Now all you're gonna do is walk your right hand forward a little bit and lift your back leg off the ground. Sounds simple, it's not an easy pose if you're new to this. Call it half moon. Right hand's under the shoulder, potentially lifting off the ground if you're comfortable. You could even use a block if that's something you have handy underneath your right hand. Now wherever you are, reach your left arm up like the bright shining star shape that you're in. In other words, all five directions, left foot, crown of the head, Right foot, left, both arms. All right, hands to the ground, square your hips. So now we're in that standing splits we were in a long time ago. This time you might grab the back of your right leg with your right hand and pull gently your head closer to your knee. We do it gently. We do everything gently even though it can be strong. Taking care of things means you're not too hard on it. Good, last inhale. Set the left foot next to your right foot. Chair pose, bend the knees, sit your hips down, and reach your arms up. Twist to the right, we've been here. Hook your left elbow outside of your right leg. Nice, kind of a tricky one to balance in here, but I want you to just lift your left heel off the ground. So you're still twisting, balancing on that right leg mostly. We're just gonna drop step the left foot to the back of the mat. You might have to lift it up for a moment to do that. Slowly but surely drop step your left foot back. Now you could drop the left knee down here if you want, or you can keep it up twisting the spine. It's kind of like that runner's lunge with a twist. How's your breath? All right, hands to the floor, step back to plank position. Remember this forearm plank, lower your elbows down to the ground. This core is strong. 
Let's give it a few breaths here. Start to walk your feet in a little bit closer, kind of like a down dog on your elbows. Just like a down dog on your elbows. Drive your hips way, way, way back. And try to lift your hips even higher. Good, five more breaths. Don't look at the screen, no need to. Three more breaths. Drive your hips back, back, back. Walk your feet all the way to the back of your mat so you're back in forearm plank. And sphinx pose, drop your knees, drop your hips, and untuck your toes. All right, release your head down. So we did this earlier, hands behind your back, interlace the fingers. Option one, lift your body up. Option two, bend your knees, reach back and catch your feet. And kick the feet into your hands. They both, they both are great. So don't feel like you have to catch your feet. But if you do catch the feet, kick the feet into the hands and lift higher. It's powerful legs, almost like you're trying to straighten the legs. Three more breaths. And one more inhale. Release everything down. Plank pose. All the way up on your inhale. Downward facing dog. Exhale, last standing side. Today, lift your hips back on the inhale. Left knee to the nose. Shift forward and round. Three-legged down dog. Go ahead and open up your right hip here. If you haven't seen that on this side, give it a couple breaths to feel. Good, and then step your left foot forward. Remember warrior one, back heel down. Reach your arms up, breathe in. And dance into warrior two, exhale. Turn the left palm up, reverse warrior, legs stay as they are. Reach up and back, give it a few breaths. So think about it this way, if you bend your left knee more, you have a bigger anchor to reach back from. And then as you come back through warrior two, go to reach down and grab your ankle with your left hand, right arm up. For today, right hand behind, actually no, we did this, reach your right arm over your right ear, palm facing down. Turn, maybe look up over your right arm. A few of you probably went into a bind. You can do that on your own here, if you'd like. Now just go slow, like you're in slow motion here. Right arm reaches up, back to warrior two, super duper slow. The last inhale, sit a little deeper and straighten your left leg. Now shortening the stance just a little bit, heel toe your back foot in, just a little bit. And then both legs straight, pull the left hip back into your right, reach, reach, reach. Left hand down to hold the leg again. Right hand behind the back. So again, you can put it on your back or to your inner thigh, roll the chest open. It's kind of like you're twisting and like you're back bending. But because you're drawing your tailbone towards the back of your mat, it's not really a back bend at all. Breathing in that life force. In yoga, we call the breath prana. Prana permeating throughout the whole vessel, the whole being. Look down in front of your toes. Bend your left knee, walk your left hand forward. Remember this, lift your right leg up so you're balancing on one leg or you're falling all over the place. Either way, it's yoga. 
Reach your right arm high to the sky. In fact, it's more yogic if you fall out of these poses and don't take it seriously than if you do it perfectly and start to compare yourself to others and think you're good at this. This is why we call it a yoga practice. We're constantly learning. It's like basketball practice, right? There's a game and then there's practice. Only in yoga, there is no game. Or if there is, it's called life. Bring both hands down, square your hips. Standing splits. Remember, you're just bending over, lifting the right leg. This time you might hold the back of your leg and lift the right leg higher. Nice, we're coming down the home stretch here. Last inhale. Set the right foot next to your left. Chair pose. Sit the hips down. <clears throat> and raise your arms. Hands to your heart, twist to the left. Hook your right elbow outside of your left knee, left thumb. And all we're doing here is we're going to transition. So this is, a, this is a transition that teaches you how to stabilize your body while you're moving. Right? A lot of yoga poses are static. How do we stabilize as we're moving? Lift your right heel and then take your time. Yeah, allow yourself to mess up if you need to. But slowly drop step your right foot to the back of your mat, stabilizing the whole time. Now you're in this crescent twist. Some of you might want to set the right knee down here. Catch your breath. Always want to show up and practice as if you're going to show up again the next day or maybe the day after. And right? take care of yourself. Last couple strong minutes of today's class. Release your hands down to the ground. Step back to plank position, forearm plank last time. Forearm plank. Now some of you that do want a little more intensity this last minute, lift your right foot a little bit and reach your left arm forward, possibly. And then switch, right foot down. Just lift your left foot or don't. And if you're still calm, maybe reach your right arm forward. Set it down, dolphin pose. Walk your feet in about halfway to your elbows. Press your hips back, back, back. So if you're gonna take a poll of people's least favorite poses or most difficult, this is on the list. Drive your hips back. Take strong shoulders, but also high mobility. So you're dipping your chest closer to your, to your toes. I'm trying to create that mobility from your strength. Lift your right leg back. And switch right foot down. Lift your left leg back. And set it down. Drop the knees. Child's pose, please. Same place we started. Only this time, try to reach your arms behind you. And let all of your weight surrender to your mat. All right, last downward facing dog today. Hands and knees, tuck your toes, lift your hips up and back. And just feel it out. Now you have a warmer body. Maybe a little fatigued, but you should put in some energy into it and feel this triangular shape with your hips lifting high like the apex of that triangle. Nice, step your right foot outside of your right hand and lower the left knee down. I'm gonna turn my right toes a little out to the right, say at 45 degrees. You may or may not need to do that. And then if you're, if you're able to, you can put your elbows down here. Otherwise, just stay on your hands and breathe. Lizard pose. 
deep into the hip. So on this one, we're looking to tap into the plasticity of the muscle fibers, which requires at least 40 seconds here. We'll stay about one minute. And it's a passive, a passive stretch, meaning you're not trying to act, engage anything. You're trying to actually do the opposite. Uh, now, as we come back up to the hands, call this pigeon pose. If you're new to pigeon, you want to do this. Heel toe your right foot back to the center, and then all the way up over to your left hand. And then drop the right knee down behind your right wrist. It's kind of like you're drawing, making a, a seven, a seven with your right leg. And then you can lift your chest up as long as you need to here. Eventually, you're welcome to come down, just like we did a second ago, maybe onto the elbows. And hang your head. Just letting the breath encourage the release of the body. Not just the stretch, but the release. Wonderful, you guys. Let's come back up to the hands. Tuck the back toes under to lift the back knee. And then three-legged down dog. Lift your right leg all the way back. Feel free to open the hip. If you know what flipping it out is, you could do that on your own. Otherwise, you're just trying to get the blood flow back into the joint. Nice and then meeting up and downward facing dog. Let's take a lion's breath here. If you're unfamiliar, the lion's breath is an eye stretch. It's a tongue and mouth stretch. And we make a big sound like a roaring tiger. Open your eyes really big. Take an inhale. Stick your tongue out. Let it go. And one more time. Full breath in. And roar. All right, step your left foot outside of your left hand and drop the right knee down. Again, I'm turning my left toes a little out to the left here. And then you can come down to your elbows if you'd like. See if you can minimize any fidgeting here just by bringing attention to it. And it's just trying to learn how to use our busy minds to our advantage. Right? A busy mind is no reason to not have a yoga practice. In fact, you can learn how to channel that activity in your brain just to be more allocated to benefit you. And that's ultimately what yoga practice is. Sure, it's some body stuff, but it's ultimately about distributing your energy where you want it to go instead of where it wants, where it thinks it wants to go. And let's come back up to the hands. Remember pigeon pose, heel toe your left foot over to the right hand and then make that seven with your left leg. I didn't mention it on the other side, but especially if you have a left knee injury on this side, you can lie down on your back, do a figure four ankle over knee to protect your knee. Right. If, if you do have knee pain here, sometimes it's better to skip this pose <clears throat> entirely. Now, if it's just a sensation, use the sensation. That's just information. Notice how that information and the feedback changes just by paying attention to it.
Nice, you guys. Last down dog coming up. First, tuck the toes, lift the back knee, open the left hip, three-legged down dog. Maybe to flip it out if you did the other side. And downward facing dog. Two lion's breaths in through the nose. Stick the tongue out and let it go. Well, let your cats and dogs hear you this time. Big inhale. And let it go. All right, jump the knees down to the floor, crush your ankles or just have a seat behind your feet and bring the soles of your feet together in front of you. Lift your chest up tall. Now, if you struggled to sit because you're already rounding the spine, if this is you, sit on something. Sit on a cushion or a block. If that's not you, go ahead and sit tall. And then bend the elbows, start to lean forward, pressing the inner thighs open a little bit more. And I just had a realization that these Zoom classes that I've been shooting, it's kind of awesome because most of you are in a room by yourself, not judging yourself, not comparing yourself to anybody else. And there's so many of these poses that I'll notice in class, some people just do them because the person next to, to them did it. At least now, <clears throat> you really have to focus on the screen to match what somebody's doing. Come back up, close your knees together, and slide your legs straight out in front of you. Same idea though, if you're already hunched in the spine, very important that you sit on a cushion or something to elevate your hips. Very common. If you're already sitting tall, reach your arms up. In about a minute, we'll fold forward here. Last seated pose today. And once you get as low as the body naturally wants to go, just relax. You can hang your head. You don't need to pull very hard at all. Beautiful, and let's go ahead and roll all the way down onto our backs. We'll be on our backs the rest of the way. A couple more poses before we completely relax. Set your feet down about hips width apart. If you want to reach forward, your fingertips, they can come really close to your heels. They might even touch your heels. Press your feet down, lift your hips up for bridge pose. Last back bend today, you can hold the edges of your mat with your hands. So you're wrapping your fingers under your mat, thumbs on top of your mat. And then kind of walk your shoulder blades under you a little bit more, triceps under you. And then rip your mat, not literally, but pull the mat outwards like you're trying to rip it. And lift your heart higher. Some of you might want to interlace your fingers under your back. You can do that instead. And then if you want the fullest degree here, you can plant the palms next to your ears, fingers will point towards your heels, the so thumbs next to your ears, and you would just press all the way up. It's not for everybody, upward facing. But... Three more breaths. And let it go, release all the way down. This time separate your feet wide apart. Let your knees fall together and rest one hand over your belly and the other hand over your heart. Give yourself a minute or so just to check in, take a few breaths. And then we'll windshield wiper gently the legs right and left as if it was just a light sprinkle 
not even sure it's raining yet. Just kind of making sure the windshield wiper blades have been changed. A little slow. All right, and then we're gonna reach the legs up here. Couple things, so if you do have something like a block, you might just use that instead. You can put your lower back underneath the sacrum, you would put the block, and then you would reach your legs up. If you don't have a block, then you're welcome to come into a shoulder stand. You can rock the feet all the way up over your head and bring the hands to your low back. Be very careful with your neck here. Doesn't have to be a straight line up. Just think about an inversion. Just means the hips are elevated over the heart. Immediate benefits for the nervous system. The heart rate is slowing down. Nice. Bend the knees, relax your legs a little bit over your head. And then plant your palms in as slow as you can. So you have to lower all the way back onto your spine. Bend the right knee into your chest, extend the left leg straight ahead and twist to the left. So drag your right knee over to the left, open the right arm out to the right. And you can look over to the right as well. And switch sides back to center. Both knees come in for a moment. And the right leg stretches straight forward. And we twist left knee drags over to the other way. And then you open the left arm out to the left and look over towards your left hand. Let's come back to center, hug the knees into your chest. Last active pose, curl the nose to, towards your knees and the knees towards your nose and just tense your whole body. It's like you're a tiny ball of energy here. And then tense your whole body up. Abs, biceps, flex your feet, maybe crunch your face. Take the last conscious inhale today, hold your breath for five. Four. Three, two, and one, let it all go. Release your knees, the legs flop out in front of you, have your palms turn up once they're resting on the floor. And you can rest your eyes as well. So if you are new to yoga practice, Congratulations, the warm ups are over. I truly mean that. This is where a lot of the benefits will come into your life. So learning how to fully expand, fully release. Even if it's just for a few moments of your day.
We'll take a moment to enjoy a few full breaths again, coming back to the body. Knowing that your energy becomes a bit sensitive whenever you do this practice. So try to keep what you have by easing back in. You can start to wiggle the fingers and the toes. Might feel nice to interlace the fingers, push the palms up to the ceiling, and then reach them all the way to the back of the room, pointing your toes forward, nice full body stretch. And then you can bend the knees, stamp the feet down onto the ground, and roll over to your right side. Tense your left fingertips. Then we'll press all the way up into a final seated position to close today's practice. Cross the legs, sit up tall, bring the hands together in front of your heart. And give your mind a moment to focus on gratitude, any simple thing in your life that you're grateful for. Opening up that field of reception, of receiving. And then also just paying our respects, understanding the yoga practice just asks that we pay attention. We start to pay attention to how we feel now after practice, how we feel all the time. It's not trying to be dogmatic and tell us to do anything or believe any one way, just being as you are and observing how that changes. All right. In the most graceful ways, let's take one last deep breath in through the nose. And as you bow, open the mouth and let it go. Namaste. And thank you.